right, we're going to go ahead and finish up our talk on operations with integers with our last operation, which is division. And before we start with the uh, classwork exercise one and using example one, you'll notice you have a box and an oval. Um, we're just going to go ahead and uh, let me just give you an example of what we're going to do. So I'm going to do it on a separate sheet of paper. Um, what it's asking you to do is to record, and I know it says in your group, but we're going to do this individually, is to pick a number sentence or a number fact. So let's say 3 times 4. And then what you want to do after that is you want to um, go ahead and say what is 3 times 4? Well, that's 12. Well, what's another way to say 3 times 4? Well, we can do 4 times 3 is 12. And then what is the related um, division fact? Well, that would be 12 divided by 4 is 3, and 12 divided by 3 is 4. Okay, so that would be an example of the fact family. And then they want the integer version of that. So now we want positive and negative numbers. So an example would be like negative 3, times 4 would be negative 12. Uh, negative 4 times positive 3 would be negative 12. And negative 4 times negative 6 would be positive 12. So that's what they're looking for for this first part. Now, before you um, take up the whole space, Know that when I ask you to do an example for these three, uh, we're going to add to that. So we're going to do division problems for these. And so three or a negative three times four is a negative 12. We'll also create negative uh, 12 divided by four is a negative three. And negative 12 divided by 3 is a negative 4. Uh, this one right here would be negative 12 uh, divided by negative 3. Oops, I, I actually put wrong one here. Negative 3 would be positive 4. And negative 12 divided by negative 4 is a positive 3. And then for this last one here, 12 divided by negative 3 is negative 4. And 12 divided by negative 4 is negative 3. So when I ask you to fill in an example 1 and the corresponding integers, Remember that you're going to fill it in like this. I want you to pick your own. Don't use mine as an example. But come up with a fact family that you can complete this step with. And when you're done, then go ahead and continue the video. OK, so when you are done with that, you should have something that looks similar to this. And again, it doesn't matter what fact family you used. As you can see, I changed to a different fact family. But as long as you have something to work with, then that is going to um, be just fine for this. And you're just going to use it as we go through. All right, so let's answer the first question. List examples of division problems that produced a quotient that is a negative number. So all you're going to do is go back up to your integer bubble and write down the examples of the ones that came up with a quotient that is a negative number. Okay, go ahead and do that and we'll meet back. All right, so here is what you should have. Again, it would apply to your um, particular problem, but whatever one of these six over here has a negative quotient, that's what you want to write down here. All right. For our second question, if the quotient is a negative number, what must be true about the signs of the dividend and the divisor? What is true about the dividend and the divisor? So if you look up here, 
the dividend or the divisor, either one, one of them has to be negative and the other one has to be positive. So that's what we're going to write down here. That the signs of the dividend and divisor are not the same. One is positive and one is negative. Okay, so take some time out to uh, write that down. All right, then for the second, or for problem number C, list your examples of division problems that produce a quotient that is a positive number. So go ahead and do that and continue the video. All right, so you should have something that looks like this. Uh, there are four possibilities. We have, in my case, minus 24 divided by minus 4 is 6. Minus 24 divided by minus 6 is 4. 24 divided by 6 is 4. And 24 divided by 4 is 6. All right, so when it comes to this question, D, if the quotient is a positive number, what must be true about the signs of the dividend and the divisor? So again, if you look at the dividend and divisor, they are the same sign. So the signs of the dividend and divisor are the same in each case. They're either both negative or both positive. All right, let's go ahead and turn to the next page. I've already done that. So we want to come up with rules with dividing two integers. So a quotient is negative. Remember, quotient means the answer. The quotient is going to be negative if the divisor and the dividend have what? Well, that would be opposite signs. A quotient is positive if the dividend and divisor have the same signs. That's going to be important to remember. So you want to memorize this and be able to identify it. So quotient, again, being the answer to a division problem. All right, for exercise two, is the quotient of two integers always an integer? Well, let's take an example using, um, I'll go ahead and use my example. If I have minus 24 and I divide it by a positive 6, I'm going to get negative 4 or minus 4. So this is an example of an integer quotient. Alright, so an example of an integer quotient. Well, what happens when I flip this around? Let's say I flip the uh, dividend and the divisor. So I'm going to say 6 divided by a negative 24. Notice how I started with negative 24, that's my dividend, and I'm dividing by 6. Now 6 becomes my dividend and negative 24 my divisor. Well, this is going to be 6 divided by a negative 24. And when I reduce that, that becomes 1 over negative 4, which is negative 1 fourth. So this would be called a counterexample because it's not matching up with what we want. We're asking, is the quotient of two integers always an integer? This is an integer, this is an integer, but my answer, my quotient, is not an integer, it's a rational number. And we call that, this has a non-integer quotient. because it is not an integer. When we have a fraction that is not an integer, that is a rational number. This is an integer. All right, so the answer to our question here, answer the question and use examples or a counterexample to support your claim. So what you want to do is just summarize what happened here. Sometimes I can have integers that divide 
and become an integer quotient. Sometimes I have integers that divide that become a non-integer quotient. So take a, a second to think about that and then let's see how we can craft our answer because this would be a good part question. This is something that they would have you work out and then explain. So take a second to, or let's go through this. I've kind of given it a close, um, a close uh, type of answer so that you can fill in your parts of it. If you want to use your own example, this would be the perfect time to practice with this. So the answer to this is no. Quotients of integers are not always integers. Remember, restating the original question. In my example above, minus 24 divided by 6 yields an integer quotient. of what? Well, it would be minus 4 right here. Okay. However, when I switch to divisor and the dividend, that quotient divides a number with a smaller absolute value. It doesn't matter that one is positive and one is negative. We're talking about the distance from 0. So the distance from 0 of 6 is smaller than the distance from 0 of minus 24 or 24. So with a smaller absolute value by a number with a greater absolute value, making the quotient a rational number between 1 or minus 1 and 1. In dividing, six divided by a negative 24. The quotient is 6 divided by negative 24, which is equal to 1 over negative 4. All right. When dividing this, And again, we'll just restate it when dividing. 6 divided by negative 24. The quotient is negative 1 fourth. Negative 1 fourth is not an integer. And its opposite is 1 fourth, which is also not an integer. So this counterexample shows that quotients of integers are not always integers. So this would be an example of a well-written explanation as to why the quotient of two integers is not always an integer. Before we get off this subject real quick, I want to pose a question to you. Is there at any time or can there be a way where you can tell when two integers that are being divided are always going to come up with an, integ or an integer quotient. So how can you determine if I have a, and you don't have to write this part down, but if I have some number we're going to call a divided by b, how do you know that, that answer is always going to be an integer quotient? Is there a way you can figure that out? So think about that, because we're not going to answer it here, but I might ask it in class and see what you come up with. All right, let's go ahead and switch to the next page. And that is exercise three. So it says, are the answers to these three quotients below the same or different? Why or why not? So. I'll give you the first one and then I want you to figure out or finish up the rest of them. So minus 14 divided by 7 is equal to a negative 2. All right. What about 14 divided by a negative 7? Go ahead and answer that. And also 
14 divided by 7, take the opposite of that. Go ahead and do that, and then we'll continue. All right, well, 14 divided by negative 7 would be a negative 2. And if I take 14 divided by 7, that is equal to 2. And then I want the opposite of that. Well, what's the opposite of 2? That would be minus 2. So, in essence, the answer to all these problems is minus 2. They are the same. Notice in problem C, though, the negative is in front of the parentheses, changes the value inside the parentheses to its opposite. The value in the parentheses is 2, and the opposite of 2 is minus 2. Okay? So, this is where we come up with, and I'm just going to write it here, that the opposite of P minus Q is the same as minus P divided by a positive Q, which is the same as Q divided by a minus P. So it doesn't matter where the minus sign is in these problems as we've shown here. Whoops. As we have shown here, minus 14 divided by 7 is a minus 2. 14 divided by minus 7 is a minus 2. And the opposite of 14 divided by 7 is a minus 2. Because again, 14 divided by 7 is 2. Take the opposite of 2, which is a minus 2. So for all numbers, for all integers, this applies. So it's good to remember that. All right. The last part is going to be this fact fluency, integer division, which I will give you in class. And so we will finish up division of integers in class. All right. See you later.